Okay, so today we got a great episode. We're going to be talking about Amazon Wholesale. Our guest is an Amazon wholesale a wholesaler and mentor. He's got a great course out there. He's breaking all the barriers when it comes out to building massive Amazon wholesale businesses. Now, as you know, we've had people talking about wholesale on this podcast before, and one of the guys had a $100 million account. So you could really grow your businesses uh, with wholesale. So I can't wait to get to our guest today's first time on the podcast, Eric Castellano. Norm, what's up, brother? Hey, how's it going, Eric? I'm doing well, my friend. How about yourself? I'm doing okay. Hey, if, and I'm sure there's a lot more to you, why don't you give us a, a little bit of a, a sample of what you do, who you are? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So first of all, appreciate you having me on the show. No Great problem. To be here. Uh, my name is Eric Castellano. I'm the owner of Amazon Lit. I've been selling on Amazon for about eight years. Uh, built the business out of my best friend's basement. And now we have, you know, 20,000 square foot warehouse, about 50 employees right below me uh, producing Amazon inventory. Uh, we average about four or five million dollars a month in sales. And um, what we do is we leverage that experience of building and continuing to operate this very large business. And we teach other people uh, who are doing wholesale how to do the exact same thing. OK, fantastic. You know, I. Strangely enough, coincidentally, uh, I was just talking to my wife who really knows nothing about Amazon private label or wholesale. And she just went out and she brought back these, this coffee uh -huh. and she, these coffee uh, is probably about $10 uh, container. She yeah. got for 50 cents. It was yeah. liquidating. And I went, this is perfect. Yeah. I'm talking to a wholesaler today. <laughs> you know, you should get into wholesale, buy all the stock up and let's see what yeah. we can do with this bloody coffee. Yeah. But uh, anyway, how did you get started in Amazon? Um, so uh, my best friend, also my business partner, Sebastian, his, his aunt at the time, this was in 2013, she knew a family who was doing exactly what you just said, Norm. You know, they were going to these retail stores, finding things discounted and selling them for uh, a margin on Amazon.com. And kind of the light bulb went off and we started doing the same exact thing, going to Costco, Sam's Club, Target, and buying what, what's called retail arbitrage and kind of got into the game a little bit. So, we, and we do have a lot of new, intermediate, advanced uh, sellers that listen to the podcast. Yeah. Wholesale, is that retail arbitrage or online arbitrage? No, no. So I think the, the best thing would just to be give a definition of wholesale. So what Amazon wholesale is, is when you buy large volume of products at a discounted price from a distributor, wholesaler, manufacturer, or brand to relist for a markup on Amazon.com. So you just find products for cheaper, sell them for a couple bucks higher. Okay, very good. I'm just curious, how tough is it to find these wholesale products? So one of the hardest things you're absolutely going to experience is opening up the wholesale accounts, you know, because for a few reasons. The first one is a lot of people, they don't know what to say or how to say it. So they just say the wrong thing in the email or the phone call they make to them. Um, but if you can get two, two to five decent accounts, you can really, really start to purchase enough products to grow your business rather large at about 20% profit margins. At that high, 20%. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty par for, for the wholesale standard. Um, some companies, usually they start off a little less and then as they get better at buying, they're able to kind of uh, master their profits a little better and get closer to that 20, 20% mark. Okay. So most of our listeners are private label sellers. Uh -huh. And they might have some experience or they might know a little bit about wholesale. So yeah. Let's talk about uh, the differences between private label, wholesale. You know, what, what can they expect? What are the costs involved? And let, let's start off with, you know, the differences between PLL and uh, or private label sellers and wholesale. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I do sell private label as well. Um, it makes up about 10% of our business. So with those products, we research an industry, right? And then we kind of niche down a little bit, find an opportunity with a product that has 
um, room for growth. So not super saturated products don't have ridiculous amount of reviews. There's not two or three companies just dominating. Um, and then we purchase those products from usually overseas, Alibaba, also some other sites we use. Um, and, and that's really, uh, but then you got to pay for, uh, advertising, sh shipping, all that stuff, right? You guys know, especially right, if you're right. private label, primary podcast. And absolutely, you guys know all that and girls. Um, but wholesale, it's just a it's it's a quick way to generate capital. Um, so what I usually suggest is if you have zero experience, start with wholesale, build up some funds because you can make ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars in a couple months, and then use that profit to then go invest in private label products, unless you got the, the five to $15,000 laying around to just do it yourself. You know? Right. One of the fears I would have, and maybe you can put my fears to ease, uh, would be going out there, buying a whack of product, and then it's just not selling. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that all comes in with product research. So the same way you, you know, you don't buy a, a private label product in, in 20 minutes after looking at it, you dive deep into it. These products, you got to understand, keep a charge. You got to look at the competitive sellers, the ranking, analyze it. So, you know, when you do buy it, it will sell no matter what. What's the success rate? Is it an 80, 20 rule or what are you finding? Um, like for Amazon wholesale sellers or for products? Yeah, no, no, for wholesale sellers. What, what's the success rate when they, they go do the research and they throw up that product? Yeah, yeah. So um, if they've done the research properly, they'll have 100% success rate, you know? And, and the average profit, like I said, 20% average selling price is about $20. So you're looking at $4 profit. So if they've done their research correctly, there's a 100% chance that it will sell. If they messed up, missed a price dip on the keep a chart, didn't realize the seller had 10,000 units in stock, then those those odds start to decrease. Now, do you ever go back? So you, let's say you've got a product that was very successful for you. Do you go back and do you negotiate um, terms with a distributor or with the manufacturer? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's really where the business begins to grow um, in two ways. One, requesting volume discounts from wholesalers and distributors. Um, you know, sometimes we'll get full truckloads, half truckloads of one SKU because we know it sells well. And the other thing is building relationships with some of these brands who are good at building brands, but not good at selling on Amazon. An opportunity opens up there as well. Right. Okay. Now, I'd really like to know about the cash that you need to invest to get the ball rolling here. Yeah. So right now, um, for private label sellers, we used to say, oh, invest 2,500 bucks and you're yeah, good to no. go. That doesn't work anymore. Nope. You, you've got a much higher, well, it's just so much more competitive. Your cash, like once you get your inventory, I, I always like to put about a three to one what your cost of goods yeah. are yeah. you know if you're investing five thousand bucks you got to throw in 15 you know just to be careful what about with wholesale yeah yeah so recommended amount to start with wholesale three to five thousand dollars okay and and that's like that's right on par obviously if you have more it's better can you start with less technically but that's the sweet spot yeah but you know uh People, and I see this a, a lot, will, where people will go, especially if they're new, they'll go to Facebook ads and they'll try to invest $300 in Facebook ad and it's just waste of money, yeah. right? Is that yeah. similar to wholesale? If you start off with a thousand bucks, you're really kind of throwing your money away. You should have a minimum of 5,000 bucks to invest. Yeah, it's, it's similar, but also I'm a firm believer that um, a, everybody should be investing in some sort of training or there's right. so many options out there that whether you want to do retail arbitrage, private label, wholesale, there's so much opportunity to just buy a course and figure it out in a tenth of the time. Um, and also, I think that uh, it's good. Sometimes it, like if you all, if that's your only thousand dollars, no. But if you got a couple grand, I think spending a thousand dollars and breaking even, it's going to teach you so much about the hustle that you can't put a price tag on that. So really it's like you're paying for experience, you know? Yeah. So on the wholesale side, what can you give us a few uh, benefits of it? Yeah, absolutely. So replenishable products. I think that's a huge benefit. So you find a SKU that hits, 
Like right now, we got some SKUs selling three, four thousand units a month, you know, making three, four hours in profit on every sale. So you find a couple good products that really hit and you just keep reordering them. You're talking about recurring revenue every single month, like clockwork. Um, also, I would say the relationships you build with these companies, you know, you could partner with a huge brand who has an amazing product, takes care of all the social media advertising, the Facebook ads, the Google ads, and you're just the company that takes a little bit of a margin on top, you know, 15, 20% on top to sell it on Amazon for them. It opens up a lot of doors that way as well. So let's say you're selling sparkling ice. You yes. find a good deal with them and you put it on Amazon. Now, you're going to have other people competing with you on sparkling ice water, correct? Yes. So yes. you've got, you're, you're fighting for that buy box. Yes, absolutely. Are okay. you ever putting PPC on it? Yes, sometimes. Yeah. Okay. So what we like to run is what I call like a catch all campaign. Um, so I'll run a, I'll run an ad on all my slower moving SKUs. Let's say it's a fourth of our inventory. So 800, 900 SKUs. I'll run a, a high budget low bid uh, campaign on that for maybe 15, 20 cents. And it will really start, it will operate at a 3% A cost. I'll spend maybe 5,000 bucks and it will generate a nice chunk of change in that month. And what I really love about the wholesale model and PPC is that it's not first come first serve. When, when somebody sees your product in PPC, Amazon cookies them. Yes. So they give you the, I think it's a 24 hour cookie, which yeah. is awesome. Yeah. So, and a lot of people don't understand that, you know, they think, oh, they're going to see our product, but they're going to go with the lowest, you know, you know, the, the lowest, um, the lowest shown price and yeah. you get the, you get the sale. Like yeah. your cookie is going to come up in 24 hours, which is yeah. kind of cool. Yeah. All right. Can we, th are there any other benefits to the wholesale model? Um, yeah, it's a, it's a super quick way to generate cash quickly. Um, you know, you can literally get started. You could start doing re say the person who wins this bundle today, they could watch that bundle right in the next week, finish it, find some distributors and have products in Amazon in the next 30 to 45 days. So it's quick. It's a quick startup. Yeah. And you don't have the expense of private label. Yes. I, I mean, it's so expensive and so time consuming. And I'm a private label seller. I love private label. I love building brands. But with this, it's if you find that that product or that niche and it just clicks, I, you could be off. Like you said, you could be running something in 30 days to 45 days and getting cash. Yes. Yeah. Let's talk about uh, maybe some action steps. So I want to get involved. I don't yeah. have your course. Yes. What do you have to do to get started? Yeah. So step number one would be to uh, register an LLC, which is very, very simple. There's services that offer to do it, um, but, you know, they're going to be probably two or three X the price and it takes 20 minutes to do it yourself. You just go to your local state website and register a business. And the reason why you need an LLC is because that LLC will provide you an EIN, which wholesalers are going to request when opening up wholesale accounts. So right. it's, it's an EIN is like your business's license plate for anybody who doesn't know what your EIN is. Um, it tells people that you exist as a company and they use that for tax purposes and then create an Amazon account. If you don't have one seller account. Um, and then step number one, immediately after that would be finding wholesalers and distributors. Cause if you don't have products to, to purchase, you, you don't have a business, you know? Now, are there any, like you were talking at the very beginning about emails that go out and there's some definite mistakes when you're contacting suppliers in China. Yes. What are the do's and don'ts when you're contacting suppliers for wholesale? Yeah. So I would say just the verbiage. So instead of saying, hey, I'm an Amazon seller, just say, hey, I'm an e-commerce distributor. It's a little more friendly. A lot of people, when they see Amazon seller, they instantly judge you. They know nothing about your business, how you operate, how you can help them grow. But they see those words and they're like, yuck. You know, so I would say definitely just changing your verbiage up a little bit and saying the right words and offering some value to them. It's a two way street. Yeah. I, and 
I, I think that's so important. I, I've walked trade shows, uh, Pet Expo. Yeah. So I was selling this product and uh, I was doing really, it was going really well. I, it was six figures a month. It's not bad. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't get anybody to pay attention to me, you know, and I, I wasn't going there saying, uh, I judge people on how they judge me when I go into their booth. Yeah. And if they're, you know, not paying any attention because, oh, you're an Amazon guy. And I hear you, when, especially at trade shows. It can be uncomfortable at times, you know. But that's actually a great grounds, a, a great area to go to. Go to the trade shows, talk to these distributors and manufacturers and build a relation. Elena Cyrus, I've been with her on many occasions, and she's gone into – Elena has been a, a guest on the show a few times. She goes in, and she just starts talking to these distributors and – just right out asks if she can be a wholesaler for you know for the company and as she exits the the uh trade show she's picked up one or two or three different accounts she's awesome yeah yeah i I agree i think any industry you're in and this is this just goes for life in general so whether you're listening to this and you like computers or you like video games or you sell private label or you do wholesale I suggest everybody goes to at least five or six trade show events throughout the year. Mm. So every other month, you should be attending some sort of event in the industry that you enjoy because it's there's so much knowledge to be shared and exchanged at events like that. Are there uh, Amazon wholesale events? Yeah, yeah. There's one happening in Las Vegas. It's called ASD. It's one of the largest wholesale Uh, trade show events and it's happened at the end of february we go out there we host a big event we walk the show floor with a bunch of our community Uh, we introduce them to brands we've been doing business with for years it's pretty amazing yeah i think my partner uh, tim jordan and and i are going to go get out there and uh, take a walk of it yeah or or maybe he'll push me around in a wheelchair or something but uh anyways yeah we're definitely going to go there yeah you know what i i think norm i think we were just at an event together in brooklyn I want to say, um, did you go to the uh, ASGTG event and then a dinner afterwards? I didn't go this year, but the last one was the last event they had. I was speaking yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a, you know what? That is one of the best events yes. in the country. It was, and, it was definitely amazing. Yeah. And, and on top of that, uh, the food is excellent. Yeah. <laughs> but the two events that I really love are uh, Kevin King's BDSS uh-huh. and that one. They're 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 awesome. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know when their next one is, but uh I definitely plan on getting out there if yeah. uh if they'll allow me out of this bloody country. <laughs> <laughs> where where are you? I okay. I'm up in uh Toronto. Oh. I'm going to yeah. Canada for the first time on on this Sunday coming up. So Really? Yeah. Where are you going? Uh, I'm going to Alberta. Oh yeah, that's a couple Edmonton. thousand miles away. <laughs> yeah, Edmonton. I got a so something we do is we have our uh, a private consulting group called our Inner Circle, and we fly around the country and we help optimize people's warehouses. So oh. you know, we we show them how to set it up, what kind of production stations, how to run your staff, and all the stuff. Like okay, that. I'm just saying, and I don't know if the guys are listening. AMZ One Step. <laughs> what's uh, what's that? Uh, uh, oh, they're, they're just a huge, really great group out in Edmonton. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I thought, oh, if you're going out there, you're probably talking to them. No, no, I never even heard of them, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna look into. Write it, it down, AMZ yeah. One Step. They're awesome. Okay, cool. so what have been some of the challenges that uh, that you see in this business model? Yeah, yeah. So I think there's, I would say, two or three main challenges. The first is a lot of people quit before the miracle happens. Mm. I wanted to quit. I was maybe nine months in, eight months in. I just wasn't seeing the growth that we expected to see. But thank God I didn't quit because that persistence and that dedication and consistency really paid off in the long run. So it's not an overnight millionaire business, but if you put work into it, it guaranteed your business will exceed your expectations. And then really uh, another trial and tribulation you're going to experience um, unless you got money like that is is funding, you know, because as your business grows, you need more capital. We all know that. So but Amazon's very generous. They offer Amazon lending, you know, for 
Um, it'll start maybe 20,000 at 7%, then go up to 50,000 at 6%, then 100,000. And they'll offer you up to over a million dollars um, multiple times a year, which can really help grow your business. There's private lending opportunities. There's um, bank loans, SBA loans. Uh, Seller's funding is a, another yeah. one that you know yeah. provides funding that uh, I really like. I, I use, I, I, I'm working with them right now. Yeah. Seller's funding is great. So there's options. There's yeah. options. Yeah. So are, do you think there's any other obstacles that you, you have to look out for? Um, I would say just doing thorough research because you don't want to get a lot of IP complaints on your account. So something people don't know is you just can't go and buy any product that you see selling well on Amazon, especially some red flags to look out for is if it has one seller and it's always had one seller, especially if that seller is the brand. And then on the third keep it chart, there's a graph that will show you how many sellers are consistently on it. So you just got to be mindful of that. And, and if you do your research properly, it's not a problem. So you should be. Oh, thank you. Uh, coffee delivery. Nice. So, I need it. Where's my coffee delivery? girl? Sorry. Sorry. It's on its way. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the things um, and I'll tell you a horror story about this. But uh, do you ever sign a reseller agreements or do you do you get them? Um, so we do, but usually it's us sending them to the company and not the company sending it to us. It's more of like, okay, this is what we are going to provide for you. Um, we just want the products at the lowest wholesale price. We'll take care of shipping, receiving returns, customer complaints, reviews, everything. Um, so really it's us sharing the agreement with them, not the other way around. So my horror story is one of my clients, they were a wholesaler. They got their product from a distributor, mm. okay, legit product. The manufacturer said to the distributor that they couldn't resell. So, mm. but he did. He didn't know. Mm. All of a sudden, one day, not a knock, all of a sudden, a ton of cops come in. Wow. They had rifles or they were pointing guns, he said, at them confiscated all their products, said it was counterfeit. Wow. And the manufacturer tried to sue them for 600,000 bucks. Yeah. Wow. That is a crazy story, Norm. That is crazy. <laughs> so uh, what, what just led me to experience that. I've oh never... my God. So, you know, I, at the time I thought, well, I would never have thought about asking for the reseller agreement from the, uh, distributor, but yeah. you should put something in writing, I think, just yeah. so you are allowed to sell on Amazon or whatever uh, platform you want to, correct? Um, if it's, listen, if it's with the brand direct, then absolutely there should be sort of con some sort of contract. But it's, if it's with the wholesaler distributor, especially some of these national distributors, that's their job. And Amazon has something called selective distribution, which essentially says in the terms of service that no brand is able to control or manipulate their listings, making it a free market. So once you start throwing some jargon like those words around from TOS to some of these brands, they're like, wow, we, we're actually doing something illegal here. You know, but most people don't know that the brand scares them and they step away when really the the brands are just being bullies. Yeah, it, it is a free market. And even yeah. though brand registry is out there uh, and, and you know what? I just did a video last night about Project Zero yeah. and how you think, oh, you know, Amazon's giving me the ability to remove everybody that's on my listing. Yeah. Well, go ahead and do that and see what happens. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you're, it, it's for counterfeit only. Yeah. Yes. And if you're just removing people left, right, and center, that's going to come back and it could bite you. Yeah. So you got to be careful. And you're right. It's a hundred percent. It's a free market. Yeah. hundred percent. Now. Okay. So let's, let's just talk about, uh, you know, for these new sellers that are going out there and, and, and you know, uh, listing on Amazon. Sorry, I'm tired. I got too much caffeine in me right oh, now. Wow. So, <laughs> but uh, for the new sellers that are out there, just about how they're listing, what mistakes have you seen new sellers uh, make when they're listing their new products? Yeah. So one would be over ordering. You know, they order nine, 90 days worth of inventory. Mm. We suggest only ordering about 30 days worth of 30, inventory. 30 days. 
Yeah, 30 days. That's because you're sourcing them from domestic distributors and, and wholesalers. And if you need more, you can get them in, in five to seven days to Amazon. So it's like yeah, the, the, the Amazon market is no different than cryptocurrency, stock market. It goes up and down, especially with name brand products. So a lot of people, they go too deep on a skew, tie up all their capital, and then they're kind of stuck with to, in a rock and a hard place. Um, and then the, the second thing would probably be not analyzing the listing properly, just not paying attention to price drops, um, consistency in price drops. It's no different than reading a graph for the stock market or it shows you every price it went at. And then also not analyzing the competition. You know, if if you miss that one of the competitors on the listing has 10,000 units and the listing's only selling a thousand units a month, you just bought inventory on a listing that the person has a year's worth of inventory for. They own that listing. They'll drop the price if they want. They got so much inventory tied up. Right. Yeah. One of the things that you just mentioned that I really like um, is it's domestic. So you don't have that supply chain issue yeah. that, you know, when ordering from China, you've got, you know, just the hassle with China right now, the Trump uh, tariffs, uh, just getting it into into Amazon. I mean, it's, it, it could take months and months and months. Yeah. Kevin, do you know Kevin King? I do, yes. Okay, so Kevin has a product that he bought for a licensed product, okay? Mm -hmm. He bought it from China. He put it through Chicago. He thought Chicago would be the best way to, to solve this issue. Since May, he's had it in Chicago. And he's had to pay, so he's had to pay for storage, mm. okay, even though it hasn't been unloaded out of Chicago. Yeah. And he had to pay the licensing fee because mm. the product wasn't, he didn't meet the licensing licensing obligation. Yeah. So he got hit twice, like to wow. add insult to injury. And wow. this is something that you really don't have to worry about that because you can turn the inventory a lot more, which yeah. helps with cash flow as well. Yes, Yes. And if you do ever get caught in a product with wholesale, like something we do is once a month, we'll go to the flea market. Right. And we'll just sell it all at cost and get the cash back into the company. Um, or you can wholesale it to other people because say you buy a product. Yeah, it might not sell well on Amazon, but maybe it does great in brick and mortar stores and you can add, you know, 10, 12 percent to it and just move it all in one shot to a local company that's right down the street from you. So it kind of opens up some opportunities as well. Yeah, and if you're trying to just blow it away like that too, if you do have something that's not moving and lowering the price doesn't help, um, I, I think by donating the product, if it is something that could be donated, you're going to be able to get at least the cost back uh, on the product as well if you're looking at just the cost. So, yeah, it's if you don't have a winner that, you know, just move out the product or liquidate it as quick as you can. You're moving quite a bit of inventory right now. You said that, you know, you almost gave up, you know, one, one year into it. Well, what type of growth did you see after that year? Um, so year one, we did about a million dollars in sales revenue at probably like an 8% net. Okay. So it, it, it was definitely a learning experience. Um, and after, immediately after, right, right when we felt like giving up, we decided to go all in and move out of the basement into our first warehouse. Now, that was a huge decision for us. The warehouse was about uh, 1,100 square feet, so it wasn't big. You know, it was like maybe two or three of these rooms here. Um, but that really allowed us to scale to the next level, make a sacrifice for the growth of our business, which was scary. And we had a lot of fear uh, with that decision, but we did it. And it was game changer, game changer, because now you got the space. And then we just kept growing from there. Yeah, and right now, <clears throat> space shouldn't be too hard to find. Yeah. There's space available everywhere. Yeah, yeah, the prices are high, though. Right now, prices are high. <laughs> well, you know, right now, also, the government, uh, depending on the state that you're in, between, uh, and also depending on the county that you're in, um, there's all sorts of government programs out there trying to stimulate um, small business again. Yes. So, you know, it's, it's not a bad time to take a look at getting into this model or, you know, getting that, um, getting that, uh, uh, warehouse. But anyways, I think it's a great model. Um, yeah. I think wholesale is, is very unique. It's, it's a different beast than private label. Um, I think you can turn dollars, like you said, uh, you can turn it quickly. 
you're not talking about a quarterly turn or a semi-annual turn. You could do this on a monthly basis, yeah. which is really going to help out with your cash flow, which I really like. Uh, Kels, let's talk about uh, questions now. Do we have any from the, uh, the listeners? Yeah, we got lots of questions coming in. Um, so. so some some of them we've kind of covered bef- uh, during the talk, but let's see from Tony. Uh, Tony uh, is asking, uh, what is the average profit margin on wholesale versus private label? Tony, what's up, man? I haven't seen Tony in a while. Oh, you know Tony? <laughs> Everybody knows Tony. Three years, four years now. <laughs> uh, but well, for wholesale, it's around 20% gross. What about what about for uh, for you, Norm? What are you seeing with your private label brands? It really depends. And for me, I, I have a different model. Like I'm really looking at things. If I'm, if I'm buying it for one, I'm want to sell it for 10. Yeah. But, but I would think 25 to 30 would be good for private label, but it's, it's, it can be a uphill battle. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. 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 Okay. Uh, yeah. Tony also said he loves your uh, YouTube channel. Uh, a big, big fan of you as well. So um, next one from Faye, uh, question. I'm looking for a distributor for a specific niche and haven't had much luck on Google. Where else can I look for distributors for wholesale in the USA? Is there a directory? Uh, and any tips on getting the best prices from these suppliers? Uh, yeah, so I'm going to change your life right now, right? Take whatever, <laughs> what, take whatever product you're looking at, right? Take whatever product you're looking at and find the manufacturer on the bottle or the can or the or the package and call them and ask them who their distributors are. And they'll give you their distributors on a silver platter, all of them. Wow. There you go. Awesome. All right. Uh, let me see. For From Mary, uh, are you creating the listings on Amazon or do you only go with uh, existing listings? Uh, so our primary focus is existing listings. Um, a, because it's extremely easy. B, they're already ranked. And C, products are already, already selling very well. So we prefer to go that route. Yeah, and it, it, then you you got to invest in the copy, the images. Yeah. So Yeah, yeah. And, and we do, though, uh, with the caveat of sometimes we create something what's called a wholesale bundle. Well, we'll take an existing product, add a loofah to a shampoo or a conditioner, make it our own product, and sell it like that. Okay. So give that added value. Yeah. All right. And then we have one more. Uh, can you please share the criteria you're following to find the best products to sell? Uh, second question. Most of the brand owners are reluctant to give accounts and don't like foreign personnel. How do you deal with that? Yeah. So I'll answer your second question first. Um, I think the mistake you're making is going brand direct instead of just finding a wholesaler that that distributes their products to the country. Um, and you can you can do this in the country you live in if there's an Amazon.com there or an Amazon.uk or CA or MX, or you could do it in US. Um, and your first question is the criteria we look for, minimum profit percentage, 10%. Um, that's gross, minimum and minimum dollar amount, two dollars. If it's if we're making anything up there above that two dollar mark, we buy it. Um, and then the the slower moving SKUs we'd like to make more money on. If they're going to move a little slower, I want to make more like five, six dollars every time we sell one. Are, are you still using the same tools that a uh, private label uh, seller would would use, like Helium Ten? Uh, no, no. So our primary tools is a UPC scraper. Uh, Scan Unlimited is a great one, and then Keep It Charts. And really, that's that's pretty much it. No. Oh. Yeah. Old Keepa, yeah. still kicking around. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, from Red, if we sell wholesale, can we write a clause for them not to sell on Amazon or Shopify? Um, if we sell wholesale. So if you're selling wholesale to other people, you can absolutely include that when they open an account that they cannot sell on Amazon and Shopify. Something you could do if you own the brand, too, which we have with some of our brands is something called transparency labels that Amazon provides. That's a great way to kind of manage Amazon if you're going more the wholesale route and you don't want other people buying your products to sell them on Amazon as well. Okay. And last question is from Andy. Uh, do you optimize listings and PPC of new brands that you're working with? If so, so do you charge them extra fees? 
Uh, absolutely. So we prefer that the company covers PPC because we'll, we'll recommend a budget between, you know, a thousand, three thousand dollars a month. And we explain to them that the cost to get in a retail catalog is tens of thousands of dollars. And the opportunity that advertising on Amazon PPC allows is really exponential as far as growth goes if you're allocating your funds properly. Um, and yes, yeah, sometimes we do charge them a listing fixing fee, uh, but most of the time we just waive that on the strength of the future of the relationship. Okay. All right. So that was it for the questions. Perfect. Uh, end. Eric, you're off the hook. That was easy. I guess I'll be seeing you at ASD. Yeah, hundred percent, man. And I, I can't think of, I swear, it was just like maybe six to eight months ago. I, I could have sworn that we were at an event together. Maybe I'm losing it over here. Well, yeah, I've been to a few events over the last few months, but I didn't get to to uh, Brooklyn this year, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. But well, well, listen, I look forward to it, man. I'll see you at ASD at the end of February. Fantastic. You have a good one. All right. I'll okay. See we'll see you later. Thank you.